Hi guys, Matt from Fanatics here. We've got a late order in this evening. We've got to get it in a tank before everything goes south on us. This is plants. Almost all plants. We've got some filler crabs in here too. I think those are right on top. Yep, there they are. There's a little bit of filler crabs. Some of them pretty good size. Anyway, uh, plant order is always a lot of fun. First thing out of the box we have Cryptocorns, scripts, Windotti Red, nice big plants. I don't think I got any bunches on these. I like to order the clumps, but when I can get the large plants like this, these are pretty nice as well. Only five bucks on those guys. Next thing out, we have more crypts. This is the Ludia. Again, the large Ludias. Not as big as the clumps, but really a nice sized plant. Good mid-ground plant on the crypts. Uh, next thing up, we have Nubian Nancon. These are small. We got a couple different size variants on the Nubias this time. Mostly because that's what they had. Oh, oh, another crypt. This is a really cool one. I like it. It's called Spirellus. Got the extra large guy on this. Super tall. Looks almost like an A-bomb. That's a uh, crypt. Easy to grow. Nice uh, background for a uh, plant that will actually do low light. Uh, next up is Java Fern. This is the Trident variety. I bought a couple different varieties. When I peeked at the invoice, it looked like we got zeroed on a couple. But uh, the Trident is, of course, got the forks on it. So that's super cool. And again, a low light plant grows well in a uh, low tech plant. plant and tank. Uh, another Crypt Windati. This is the green large. So I think we got the red, the green, and the Ludia. And the Spirilla. So a good variety of Crypts this week. Uh, more java fern. This is narrow leaf. Nice bright green on this java fern. Looks really good. I still got a couple mats from last time. Maybe I'll cut those up. Uh, there be a nangi small also. Uh, Nancon and the nangi. Again, got those in small this time because that's what they had. Dwarf bunched Sagittaria. Pretty nice. We've got a little bit of the sword spade top, but nice compact bunches on those. Very nice. It's a little mat, uh, grows a ground cover. Again, a low tech ground cover. Uh, most of your ground cover needs CO2, but you can do the sag or the dwarf sag as a ground cover without it. This is another grip. So this is a medium grip. This is the undulata. These guys get a pretty good size leaf also. Nice spade shaped leaf. Another fairly easy to grow crib. Seems like I went crib crazy here because here's now the Wendati Brown. So I got the red, the brown, the green, the Ludia, the Undulata, and the Spirillus. We got crips and we got crips and we got crips. Remember our crips are good for a low tech tank. Kind of stocked up on stuff for your non-CO2 tank. Not that you can't do CO2 with them. But don't have CO2 as well. So, and here's another. This is another smaller variety of Crypt. That's Crypt Parva. Crypt Parva uh, is very similar to the Sag in look. It's got a nice carpeting grassy look, but it's a Crypt Grows Easy. Uh, speaking of Sag, this is a narrow leaf Sag. This just really makes me laugh because it's got a nice fluted top to this narrow leaf sag. Sometimes I get it, it's like a needle leaf. But that's narrow leaf. Uh, Glossia stigma, lidded. So this is a ground cover. It's got a little bigger leaves on that too. It's a little easier to grow than your baby's tears usually is. You know, sometimes I have trouble with it too, but uh, I'll do that with CO2, but it's a little less sensitive. Or pear grass. This will do well as a ground cover without CO2. It does better with CO2, obviously. But that's a real nice ground cover. And let's see, this is Anubia nana small. Again, our Anubia plants came in small this time. Check and see, I might be able to get a little discount on those. Just glad to be able to get them in, though. They were a little shy on what they had for Anubia this time. This is corkscrew valve. I like corkscrew valve. It's kind of small, but if it's happy, it'll grow like crazy. 
you guys know me, me and Val's don't always get along. The Italian Val from last time actually is now finally coming back. So that'll be available for sale pretty soon. Uh, now here's not small Anubias, it's uh, mixed Anubias in the mediums and those are huge, absolutely huge. So that will be a real steal on those. For the size for the price point on those is really good. Let's see what, what they actually shipped. Uh, now this is large. This is lace leaf water sprite. That'll grow clear up out of a 55. That's really really tall stuff. Nice and a good price on the very nice big lunch plant. That'll grow fairly well without CO2. A faster with it. Uh, this is the Indian fern. Looks like they shorted me some of that. So they get only a half a dozen of the Indian fern, but it's really nice and tall. It's the same. Is this guy just a different leaf structure variant? Again, will grow reasonably well without CO2. And Java fern large. Oh my gosh, look how big that is. I thought it was a sword plant. Let's see what it looks like in the tank. But that's going to stick out of a 55 gallon tank. That's huge. Speaking of huge, look at Amazon swords. Literally up the top of the bag. I love it. Extra large Amazon sorts. <laughs> you thought those were big. How about extra extra large Amazon swords? Look at the size of these. I kind of went nuts on Amazon swords this time. So you see, definitely see the difference in size on those. We'll be spreading those out to make sure that the leaves don't dry out. They're so huge. Put them in the 90. Both to show you. Um, let's see. Amazon sword large. Again, if I'd have started here, I'd be like, "Wow, look how nice those Amazon swords are!" So the larges look real good. The extra large look amazing, and the extra extra large as well. That's just ridiculous. Another big sword. This is the Marble Queen Radicum. This is a really pretty sword. Um, um, be able to see it in the video. And it'll move. We'll get the tank picks on there, you really see it. But see how it's got the yellow and green marbling in it? Really pretty. And it's got the really long stems with the round leaf because it's a radican style. Uh, more Val. This is a bunch of jungle Val. Looks really good. Hopefully that uh, settles into our tank real nice. Uh, next up we have Red Root Floater. That looks really nice. Got a big bunch of that. We'll cut that out that ready for you. Love me some floating plants. Into our bunch of plants here. This is Leaded Rotala. Tell me which variety, so I have to look it up and I'll get it in the get it in the labels for you. Which Rotala is it? Macaranda or which one that is. Uh, this is Mermaid. flat bit of green right there but that's got the serrated leaves really pretty and then once you run a little co2 on it it gets a little spindly stuff off it that's a really cool plant uh, dwarf four leaf clover another cool carpeting plant doesn't look like much here we got uh, another variety of this that's actually come on really nice in our display tank but here we got new clumps of that uh, that is a great carpeting plant does much better with co2 um, let's see some bulbinous bulbs. Let's see if we can get these sprouted. Apon bulbs have been really hard this last year, not just because of the pandemic. Apparently, there's a typhoon that wiped out the uh, biggest grower of those clear back last year. Uh, that's just messed up the availability of those. Uh, this is Scarlet Temple, unreal pink color. For the that's the out of water leaves or the emer, emerged leaves. The immersed leaves will be a little bit different as that grows in. Our example's been doing really well. Uh, here's Rotala Vietnam. Again, it's got the immersed leaf on that. Must be the season for it. Uh, it'll get more of a needle leaf when it's emerged or submerged. Uh, but it's got the nice pink color to it. I really like Rotala. Uh, 
Odyssey, Luigi Cuba. Didn't get this last time. This has got a really thick stem on it when it gets big. And it's got kind of a light green veining to the leaves. It's just a little bit tattered there, but as soon as we get it to the tank, it'll take off. Literally, we'll have this stuff grow clear out of the tank. Buds usually do well for us. Uh, high grow Paraguaya. That's a real grassy looking stuff. Well, not grass, you know, the long, thin leaf uh, high grow. Usually does pretty well. Uh, next one, Amania gracilis. You guys noticed how big that got in our tanks this last time. We sold out of the last of it last week. Uh, the grassless and the Senegalis both really did well. Uh, and, well, this is real thin stems right now. It won't take long, that'll really caliper up. Uh, high grow penna, that's got a kind of an oak leaf look. Really pretty plant. Fairly easy to grow as well. I say that a lot, fairly easy to grow. Um, we mostly pick stem plants by something that's relatively easy. Now, you buy four plants, put them together, and sometimes they just don't take. But uh, we try to pick out stem plants that are relatively easy with a good life uh, and a good substrate. We try to tell you up front if you're really going to need CO2 to make it work. Here is another floater. This is Salvinia. It looks like little cat tongues. It does better in a little cooler water than like your Zola or your Red Room floater. This looks like this is a wire mat, a Taiwan moss. Every time I get a chance to pick up a different type of moss, I pick it up to see if we can't propagate it. My dream is to have 40 different types of moss in different buckets and be able to propagate them all here. We'll see if this will get us one step closer. Is the crystal moss or crystal wort? Doesn't even look like it, so we'll see if I can get that going. That's another thing I like to propagate. Did really well with it last summer, but this year, like I said, I, I took my eye off it for a second and it melted on us. Uh, moss balls. Gotta love moss balls. Always pick up a few of those every time we order because we get lots of call for moss balls. Let's see, uh, Zola, that's another floater. Zola likes really hot water and very still water. Will not do well with a lot of flow. Red root floater likes a lot of light and medium to low, well, very low. It's a, it's a very, very low flow. It does well. Same with the Zola, except it likes the warm water. This is a Ludwigia. We call this a needle leaf. When that settled into the tank last month, uh, it turned out looking like almost like a pogo statement or something. It had really beautiful needle leaves. So I'm looking forward to that needling out again. Uh, a lot of these guys, when they come in, they've got the immersed leaf and the leaf structure changes over the first couple weeks. Uh, this is Golden Laudelia. It's got the nice lemony color to it. I really like Lodelia anyways. A really round little. It's almost like a plastic plant. Uh, Super Red Mini Ludwigia. I love the Luds. They're easy to grow, easy to propagate. You've got great color definition, especially if you got a decent full spectrum light. You'll get the great reds on the top. Very fun plant to grow. Uh, ordered 
banana plants. I ordered large ones this time. Last time I didn't specify large and they sent me itty bitty bitty ones. This time we got some nice, great, big banana plants. We've been looking for bananas. a lot like temple, this regular temple, not the scarlet temple. It grows with a little thicker stem. Uh, we perennially do very well here. We can actually propagate that relatively easily. It'll grow clear out of the tank. It's very nice. Well, speaking of the devil, here's the temple. Notice that the leaves are a little longer on the temple. It grows similarly. Usually not quite so thick on the stem, and it's not as likely to pop its head right out of the water like the blue high grow. It's like an old standby, easy, easy to grow, nice, cool leaf. Though the leaf changes, it gets more of that roughly look when it's underwater. When it's out of water, it's got those round with the frilly edges. Um, next up we have Lennon Ludwigia. So the ripens probably. Again, they didn't specify on the tag, but I'm pretty sure that's ripens, which is nice and green now, but it'll get a good red top to it when we get it in our tanks. Again, our buds do really great for us. Uh, Amania Senegalis. I said that we had the grassless and the Senegalis. Here's the uh, Senegalis. One of them had a thicker stem. I forget which one, but they do look different when you put the two together. They're pretty similar. Though. Very, very nice, easy stem plant. Uh, <laughs> Barry and I got a good laugh out of this. What I meant to get was Muriel, but they were next to each other on the order form. We have a ton of money work. We uh, actually are propagating it here like crazy. So we're going to do a special on money work just for oh, until we've gotten a few less in stock. We're going to do those half price or buy one, get one actually. Uh, penny work, this is Brazilian penny work. Propagated on that this time as well. It did very well for us this time. Sometimes that's a little bit brittle and will break and end up being a floating plant for you, but it almost will always grow and it's just really irritated. Uh, last one of the stem plants. This is dark red blood widgia. I really love this plant. Very beautiful. Dark, dark colors. Again, good light and you'll maintain those really unreal bright dark reds. Madagascar lace bulbs. Yeah, we'll get those sprouted up and see how they will do. And then Olivacus bulbs. Oh, I love the Olivacus. Let's get those long, roughly leaves. Looks like a ruffle sword. But it's an Olivacus bulb. And the last thing in this bag is potted Anubia plant. I get both the bare roots and the potteds on the Anubias, generally speaking, because I don't actually like to plant with the pots, but some people really do. And when somebody comes in and wants a plant for their three gallon tank or for their low tech tank, I send them home with a potted. Okay? It's pretty easy for them to do well with those. But the first thing I always do with those potted plants is I pop them right out of those pots because uh, rock will, will rot out the roots get them out of there so that the roots can start uh, getting into your own substrate. That's it for this first box. Second box ought to go really fast because I think it's all just one plant. All right, here we go with box number two, and this will be a kick because I've been getting a lot of requests for hornwort, and when I get it in the bunches, half the time I get zeroed on it look good. So I just bought a whole, come on in, whole box, one whole big box of horn water. So if you want horn water, we got you hooked up. I got enough horn water for everybody. And really, that's the only thing in this box. It's one whole box of horn water. 
that's it for our plant order. Come down. Look at how nice this is. This is awesome. When I get it in a bunch lot like this, they don't let it up. We'll have to do that here. They just go out in the pond, they gather it all up, and it's just not as beat up. So it looks really good. We'll get it into the tank, bunched up, and uh, it'll be ready for you guys next week. Thanks, guys.